from this. To this. I definitely knew <laughs> that Seminutians would be watching um, and hoping that they could get their first Olympic gold, well, Olympic medal, and it came as a goal. So I'm sure they're celebrating right now. What happened in Paris is literally a dream come true for the St. Lucian athlete. While she worked very hard for the fruition of this particular dream, so she more than deserves to stand on top of the podium. Her win, though, came as a welcome surprise, at least for her fans. Truthfully speaking, all eyes were on Shakari Richardson as she attempted to end a long American wait for Olympic women's 100-meter gold. So it came as a shock when instead of her, it was Julian Alfred from an island of 180,000 people who stole the show. The St. Lucian sprinter delivered a brilliant performance to win the 100-meter final in a national record, 10.72 seconds, beating world champion Richardson into silver and breaking Jamaica's recent stranglehold over the event. That it was St. Lucia's first Olympic medal only made the moment sweeter. I feel honored just to be an ambassador for my country, Alfred told reporters. Not many people know about St. Lucia. Sometimes I can be in an Uber and they ask me where I'm from. And they'll be like, where's St. Lucia? After her win, people are most definitely searching for information about her, along with that of her home country. Among the things they'll find out is the fact that St. Lucia, an Eastern Caribbean island nation, had never previously had an athlete on the Olympic podium, while Americans have won well over 300 titles in athletics alone. So yes, Julian's 100-meter win is both historic and praiseworthy. When Julian Alfred was a young girl in St. Lucia, she was asked who she wanted to be when she grew up. Even then, she'd been aspiring for greatness as she answered, the next Usain Bolt. At the time, it seemed like the boldest of ambitions. Given that her tiny country had never won an Olympic medal and barely had any facilities, her fascination and admiration of the fastest man alive fueled her to run as fast as she could in Paris. On the day of the Women's Olympic 100-meter final, the sprinter woke up at the crack of dawn, feeling like she needed some extra inspiration. So, she opened her journal and wrote the words, Julian Alfred, Olympic champion. She also pulled up videos of some of Usain Bolt's Olympic victories. I was picturing myself coming across the line and being an Olympic champion, she recalled. Little did she know that hours later, her vision would actually become reality. Alfred burst out of the blocks and ran away from American pre-race favorite Shakari Richardson with startling ease, winning in a blazing 10.72 seconds to secure her tiny Caribbean nation's first Olympic medal. As a smiling Alfred streaked across the finish line, she ripped off her bib and started pointing at her name. It's a name that is now etched in history after the 23-year-old ran the eighth fastest women's 100 in history on Stade de France's rain-soaked purple track. Her victory is the culmination of a journey that she said began in St. Lucia's capital city, Castries, where she used to run barefoot in her school uniform. She eventually secured the attention of her school teachers when she began beating the boys in her first and second grade classes. Bolt was Alfred's childhood hero. I just wanted to be just like him, she said. By age 14, Alfred had rediscovered her love for sprinting, but she felt like she needed a different environment to fully tap into her potential. In 2015, she moved to Jamaica to attend St. Catherine High School and to see how far I could go with the sport. That she did. Come far, that is. In 2018, she accepted a scholarship to Texas. In 2022, she won the first of two NCAA titles in the 100. In 2023, she swept the 100 and the 200 at NCIA's, turned pro, and signed with Puma, notably failing to medal in either the 100 or 200 at the World Championships last year shook Alfred's confidence. Her legs were weary from a long college season, and she didn't have enough left to compete with elite sprinters who had trained only with world championships in mind. Because of this, she didn't believe she could become an Olympic champion in Paris. 
So actually finishing first in a race that boasted world-class champions like America's Richardson and Jamaica's Fraser Price seemed unreal for her chaos. I'm just, I'm just happy to be up there as an Olympic champion. <laughs> I'm just hoping to see what tomorrow holds for me. That's all, I've, that's all I care about right now. Joyous, heartfelt chaos erupted in her hometown when she crossed the finish line ahead of her competitors. Their reactions are not surprising in any way, to be honest. After all, the three-time NC Ballet champion had pulled off a stunning victory in the Stade de France in the blink of an eye. Alfred was overwhelmed with emotion after her victory as she dedicated the win to her late father, who died 11 years ago. Most importantly, God my coach, and lastly, my dad, who believed that I could do it she answered when asked who she dedicated her victory to. He passed away in 2013, and now he couldn't get to see me on the biggest stage of my career. But he'll always be so boastful of his daughter being an Olympian. The USA's Richardson claimed silver in 10.87, while her compatriot Melissa Jefferson took bronze in 10.92, representing the first time American runners have won two medals in the event since Atlanta 1996. So there's that for Team USA, at least. So while Julian is out there rejoicing, it was a not-so-great day for the Americans who competed against her. What happened on the women's 100-meter final was a reminder that in real life, there are rarely fairy tale endings as Alfred ran away from Richardson with startling ease, streaking across the finish line in a blazing 10.72 seconds. Richardson, on the other hand, finished second in 10.87 seconds, a terrible start putting the gold all but out of reach after the first 30 meters. She had to rely on her top end speed in the second half of the race just to break away from the rest of the pack and salvage silver. The loss? She'd been aiming for gold, so anything less than that is a loss. Couldn't have been easy to digest. Richardson is, after all, one of the most visible athletes of the Paris Olympics. As a result, she faced immense pressure to live up to her status as the pre-race favorite and win gold. While Julian's exuberance is expected and welcome, one can't say that the American's reaction is not in any way unexpected. About 15 minutes after the race, Richardson blew past reporters and did not answer any questions. She only spoke when a reporter addressed her and mispronounced her first name. It's Shakari, she said curtly. The only silver lining for her at the moment is the fact that she still has the fastest time this year with 10.71. The American is also ahead of the St. Lucian sprinter on the world all-time list in the women's 100 meter with a PB of 10.65 and 10.72 respectively. Nevertheless, the 100-meter final was a day Richardson may look back at with more than a hint of regret. Her slow start in races has become something of an Achilles heel, even if she has recovered brilliantly in the past. In the Olympic gold medal race, it was her reaction time that was her downfall, measured at 0.221 seconds compared to Alfred's 0.144. By the time she had regained her composure, Alfred was just too far down the track for Richardson to mount one of her famous comebacks. At 24, Richardson is still in the earlier stages of her career, and the prospect of a home Olympics in Los Angeles in 2028 may just be one she relishes. So there's that at least. Watch this to see how others are faring so far in Paris.